Hey, how's it going guys? Jackson here with Toasty DIY, and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the rectifier on a 97 Sea-Doo XP. So these are going to be on basically any jet ski. The rectifier's job is to basically turn the uh, alternating current from the stator that's spinning into direct current uh, by basically clipping um, one of the uh, voltages. So essentially as you can see my jet ski is no longer charging at the moment uh, and one way to verify that based on the video I'll show you in just a second um, is you know your battery should be at about 12.6 volts a nice good you know charged battery 12.6 once you start it it should be hovering somewhere between 13 and I don't know 14.5 ish at the most um, especially if you rev it if you rev it it should go up as well as you can see on my video though um, you know, I start it, it's only at, at about 12.6, which is about what I started at. I rev it, it doesn't go up, and then when I turn it off, the battery voltage actually starts trickling back up. So, that's how I know, um, for a fact, the battery is not charging. Now, am I 100% the rectifier is going to fix it? No, but is it less than $20 uh, for, you know, an aftermarket part? Yes. So, less than $20, and it's literally just as easy as, you know, taking the two bolts out and then plugging these two connectors in. That's a heck of a lot easier and cheaper than replacing the whole entire stator. Um, so, first we're going to try this out, and we'll see what that does. I've had a couple of other things acting kind of weird in the jet ski as well, so, you know, if we're lucky, this will fix that. So, first thing we're going to do is take um, the, these little uh, air intakes off. You really don't even have to. I mean, it's right back here, and you could technically get to it I just want to take at least this one off because as you can see it's not the, the easiest to fit my hand back there all right so we got that air bellow removed and as you can see it's just right there pretty easy to get to I'm just going to be using a 10 millimeter socket on a 3 8 ratchet with an extension um, which obviously could go much smaller because this is a very uh, easy to unscrew process so obviously, just for safety purposes, make sure you don't fry anything, make sure the battery is disconnected. Um, but basically with these two connectors, you're just going to kind of lift up and then pull just like that. And there's going to be two of them. Um, now if you have an earlier or possibly later jet ski, um, this seemed to be one of the few CDs that I saw that used this style of um, rectifier. The other ones that I was seeing um, used like a, like a similar one, but they didn't have uh, actual, you know, nice plugs and everything they just had like uh, butt connectors so I don't know if they were just meant to be spliced in yourself but as you can see this one here actually has you know pretty nice uh, looking plugs and everything it is you know keep in mind it's it is an aftermarket part it is you know a Chinese aftermarket part so I don't know how great it's gonna be um, but you know like I said it was under 20 bucks so as long as it works then it works I just almost lost it there too <laughs> All right, so now that we've got the new one installed, basically just in the opposite order that we uh, took it apart, let's go ahead and pop the battery back in. It has been on the battery maintainer, so I expect to see um, at least 12.6 volts just, uh, you know, getting it started, and then hopefully once it's uh, actually running, we should see somewhere between 13 and 14. All right, guys, so as you can see, we now have the jet ski charging again. However, it was not the rectifier that was causing this, which I honestly had a feeling of. Um, from what I saw in other videos, the rectifier, uh, symptoms of it going out were basically that it would allow overcharge, almost like a, like a bad voltage regulator. You'd be going at like, you know, 15, 16 volts when really you should be topping out, um, you know, around 14 uh, or, you know, a little bit less or a little bit more than 14. So I ended up having to actually replace the stator. And so what I did was I actually went on eBay and I bought an OEM, uh, just really good condition stator. Um, you know, it was out of a, I believe a 96 um, XP. And you know, I, I made sure that they were compatible and they were. And like I said, I mean, this one was in way better shape than the one that I had, which I'll show you the one that I had in just a minute. But to get to the stator, you basically have to take off this flywheel cover. Um, there's about 10 bolts, I believe, and it's these guys here. So like, you know, one, two, there's a third. Um, there is an engine mount under here. Obviously, make sure that you unplug this guy right here. I believe I used to have uh, like, like an oil drive pump here, but that's been deleted for me. So, you know, if there was some in there, obviously you'd want to take that off as well. Um, but there's just one bolt holding the actual engine on. Obviously, there's other mounts, so you don't have to worry about the engine falling out or anything. However, the engine will try to, you know, kind of droop forwards on you, and it's going to make the mount really hard to get out. So what I did was I tied a um, ratchet strap around this uh, big inter exhaust here and then I basically you know ran it uh, through the back of the jet ski and then uh, onto the trailer so you don't need to it doesn't take a lot of force but you do need to kind of you know ratchet it up a little bit to 
uh, actually support the engine and hold it up so you can get that mount out and to be able to get this out. There is one really hard to reach bolt that's right at the uh, bottom down here um, that you'll need to use a wrench for unless you want to really tilt the engine back to be able to get to it. There's just a little bit of fiberglass there where that engine mount is, so it's doable, um, you know, in, in the stock position. So this is where I went ahead and actually did the repair. Um, Basically, this is all one unit on these. You'll see a lot of other uh, stators online that might say they work for an XP, and uh, I don't know, maybe you can make them work, but in the actual XP, like OEM, um, you know, stator, it, it's all one piece, including the actual plug. So, with mine, I was doing the ohms um, test between the pins, and it was good on the actual pickup here. However, every single one of these that was supposed to be... Um, uh, continuity, you know, just zero basically. Um, I wasn't getting any continuity between, so I don't know if that was just chance. I mean, these leads are pretty nasty, but I was not getting any, so, um, and at that point I just assumed, I'm like, okay, there's really, I mean, nothing else can be wrong unless there's something wrong in the wiring or uh, a fuse that I overlooked, so, you know, we got lucky and it ended up being this, and I, I assume for most people, if they replace their rectifier, especially on an older ski like this, and it doesn't fix it, then it, it's likely your stator. And as you can see, mine was absolutely, like, disgusting. Um, this should all be, like, a tan color, kind of like that. Um, I mean, all of the actual contacts or uh, the brushes, basically, were just completely, you know, gunked up. Um, I mean, yeah, the whole thing was just gross. I mean, and look at the, the pickup on this. It was covered and stuff, so I don't think that this one would have even been salvageable. I mean, I'm sure there's a way you could fix it um, and maybe resolder whatever was actually broken, but it really wasn't worth it in my case. I think I maybe paid like uh, 50, 60 bucks for that OEM one that was in really good shape. So, uh, you know, overall, it wasn't a super hard job. I mean, like I said, the biggest thing is just supporting the engine and getting that mount out. It's not that hard to do because you can just use a ratchet strap. You know, it's not like taking an engine out of a car where you need a cherry picker. You know, these engines are light enough to where even without the ratchet strap, if you're strong enough, you can actually get in there and just pull up on the actual exhaust and you can move the whole entire engine by hand. It's just kind of hard to do with one hand. Um, so, yeah, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. I'm also going to link a video um, down in the description that kind of helped me out in figuring out where the stator even was. Because um, I've, I've been, a, you know, I've been a mechanic for a while, but I've never, I haven't worked on jet skis a ton. You know, I've been learning everything I know on this 97 XP as I go. So, he kind of helped me out in figuring out, uh, you know, what pins to test. Um, he had a lot of the manuals and whatnot that he flashed uh, pictures of, so that was nice and made things a lot easier as well. So hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.